even though there exists an entire standard, structures and bonding, which is practically devoted to the idea of physical properties, you still need to know a little bit about the properties of organic chemicals and the observations seen by them. You'll probably get a question along the lines of, here are some jars of clear colourless liquid whose labels have mistakenly fallen off. How can you tell what they are? And this sounds incredibly tricky, but we'll give you some tools now to help you distinguish between different organic compounds. The melting and boiling points of chemicals, which you'll probably know if you have already looked at structure and bonding, is all about the forces that keep one molecule held to the next one. For example, when we have a cup of ethanol, we don't just have a bunch of ethanol molecules floating around. They are held together by something called weak intermolecular forces, like this. It's very important that you understand we're talking about intermolecular forces when we melt or boil something, not intramolecular forces. Intermolecular forces equals between molecules, what attracts one ethane molecule to the others around it. Intramolecular equals within molecules, what binds the carbons and the hydrogens and the oxygens to one another. Covalent and ionic bonding are types of intramolecular forces. In red are these weak intermolecular forces that we've been talking about. Those circle around the molecules don't actually exist in real life, we've just used them to show you how the entire molecule is attracted to its neighbours. When we melt or boil any substance, we're breaking open these intermolecular forces, and doing that requires energy. That basically means that the stronger the weak intermolecular forces are, the more heat is needed to break them, and so the higher the boiling and melting point of the substance will be. Aside from this theory, it's useful for you to know a couple of specifics. For example, it's useful for you to know that, because of their OH molecule, alcohols and carboxylic acids have higher melting and boiling points than alkanes and alkenes, and carboxylic acid's boiling point is higher than the boiling point of its corresponding alcohol. No matter which organic molecule you might be looking at, the longer it is, the higher the melting and boiling point. That last point is especially useful when we're comparing, say, ethane and propane. These are both alkanes, and so they're pretty similar when it all comes down to it. However, because it has one extra carbon atom, propane has stronger intermolecular forces than ethane, and so it's got a higher melting and boiling point. Short chain, like 1 to 4 carbon alkanes, will be gases at room temperature, and alkanes with over 14 carbons will be solids. So to distinguish between two compounds of the same family, heat them, and whichever boils first has the shorter carbon chain. Simple as that. Whenever we talk about solubility, we make things simple by saying that like dissolves like. This sounds ridiculous and meaningless, but it's actually super helpful. It tells us that a polar substance will only dissolve in another polar substance, and a non-polar substance will only dissolve in another non-polar substance. Alkanes and alkenes are both non-polar, because carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms have almost no difference in their electronegativities. By now, you'll hopefully have a general idea of what we mean when we say polarity, and how we get polar substances. Because alkanes and alkenes are non-polar, but water is polar, we cannot dissolve alkanes or alkenes in water. But of course, there are some organic substances that are polar, for example, alcohols and carboxylic acids. These will dissolve in the polar water. The final thing that we've got to say about the properties of organic molecules is about acidity, which you'll be painfully familiar with if you've looked at the chemical reactivity topic. Anyway, almost all the organic molecules we've looked at in this standard are neutral, which means that they have no particular acidity at all. This sounds dull, but it's actually a good thing. There are, however, two different non-neutral substances you need to know about. Carboxylic acids, which are all acidic, obviously, and amines, which are all basic or alkaline. You'll also need to have some idea about how to test molecules for acidity. This can be done simply with damp litmus paper, which comes in red and in blue colours. It works like this. A carboxylic acid will turn damp blue litmus paper red, 
and an amine will turn damp red litmus paper blue. Remember, it has to be damp litmus paper. If you remember your reactions, you'll remember that these react similarly with similar reagents, but with slight differences that will be helpful for you to tell them apart. Remember that an alkane will slowly react with bromine in the presence of UV light. An alkene will readily react with bromine, and an alkyne will even more readily react. Since bromine gas, or bromine gas dissolved in water, is brown, and the products of these reactions are colourless, there's a simple test to be done. Mix bromine with each of the three organic compounds, and whichever solution decolorizes the fastest is the alkyne, the next fastest one is the alkene, and the slowest one is the alkane. An even simpler test is to burn a sample of each organic compound. Remember the difference between complete and incomplete combustion? Due to the chemical difference between alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, alkanes burn with the cleanest flame, as in they have the most complete combustion, and alkynes burn with the sootiest flame, they have the most incomplete combustion with alkenes falling in between. Another handy way of figuring out which chemical is which. One thing you might be given in the question is an oxidizing agent, which is maybe the most complicated tool you'll use to identify an alcohol. How it works is, alcohols are neither acidic nor basic, and can be difficult to distinguish from other organic compounds. But the cool thing about alcohols is that they can be very easily oxidized to form carboxylic acids, which are then super easy to identify. The oxidant you're given will be acidified permanganate, which is purple, or acidified dichromate, Cr2O72- over H+, which is orange. MnO4-, the acidified permanganate, will be reduced to colourless Mn2+, while Cr2O72-, the acidified dichromate, will be reduced to green Cr3+. So the first thing you'll notice if your unknown substance is oxidized is this color change. But you still might not know if you've oxidized an alcohol to a carboxylic acid, or if you've oxidized an alkene to an alcohol. So to find out, simply use blue litmus paper. And if it turns red, you had an alcohol before, which is now a carboxylic acid. If it doesn't change color, you had an alkene before, which is now an alcohol. Voila. Sound difficult? Try to think about the identification process as a simple step-by-step to stop yourself getting overwhelmed. Each time you have an unknown, think about what tools you have at your disposal to identify compounds of that type. Once you get good at it, you may even begin to enjoy the mystery.